Hi everyone, welcome to another video by Chinta. I am Rajthi. In today's video, we'll look at a problem from the CMI BSC entrance. Uh, it's a problem that involves polynomials mostly, but the thought it represents is essentially that of the Chinese remainder theorem that you know from number theory. But we know that polynomials and numbers, natural numbers, share a lot of algebraic similarities. And so, you know, you have the Euclidean algorithm for the numbers, and similarly, you have the Euclidean algorithm for polynomials. And using similar ideas, you almost have something like the Chinese remainder theorem for polynomials. And so that's the spirit of the problem. And let's get into it. So this problem is from the CMI BSC entrance. 2016 and it's the subjective problem number 5 let's look at what the problem says we want to find a polynomial px assumedly a real polynomial which means a polynomial with real coefficients that has both the following properties when px is divided by x to the 100 the remainder is the constant polynomial 1 and when px is divided by x minus 2 cube, the remainder is the constant polynomial 2. For those of you who might need a little revision with how division works in polynomials, uh, it's very similar to that of natural numbers given polynomial fx and gx, there exist polynomials qx and rx such that when fx is divided by gx, it leaves, it has a quotient of qx and it leaves a remi remainder of rx, in, where the degree of r is greater than zero and equal to zero since we can have a constant remainder and strictly less than the degree of j of n. Very similar to how the division of numbers works. And so, for example, well, when uh, x squared plus one is divided by x, the quotient is x and the remainder is one. So that's how division of polynomials works. So in that sense, we want a polynomial P of x, such that when it is divided by x to the 100, the remainder is the constant polynomial 1, and when P x is divided by x minus 2 cube, the remainder is the constant polynomial 2. Right? Okay. So, first of all, I hope you notice that why this is similar to the setup of Chinese remainder theorem, because we want a polynomial P x, which is essentially congruent to 1 mod, x to the 100 and px congruent to 2 mod x minus 2 q right so that's why it's a similar setup but the method we use here is going to be a little different and it'll, it'll be something very specific to polynomials at the very end i'll talk about how one could use a common method for Chinese remainder theorem for polynomials and numbers. It's a very nice unified picture here. So, okay. In, so there's a general thing here, which is that generally, if fx, a polynomial, when divided by x minus c to the k leaves a constant remainder that means a remainder with degree zero it, it's not a it's not something that looks that's a function of x if you will leaves a constant remainder yes. then the derivative of x is divisible by x minus c to the k minus one what are we saying? That if f of x leaves the remainder 
This leaves a constant remainder when divided by x minus c to the k. What does that reflect? k times some qx plus some constant remainder, some r. Right? I've not written rx because this is a number. What happens when I take the derivative? I take the derivative. I get x minus c to the k times q prime x plus k times x minus c k minus 1 qx. This is just some simple differentiation. This part is clearly divisible by, q, by x minus c to the k minus 1, right? I can take out x minus c to the k minus 1 common, get x minus c times q prime x plus k times q of x, right? So x minus c to the k minus 1 is common, and r is a constant, so when we differentiate it, it dies. So f prime x is divisible by x minus c to the k minus 1. Now, is the converse true that if, if f prime x is divisible by x minus c to the k minus 1, does this imply that f of x leaves a constant remainder when divided by x minus c to the k. And the answer is yes, it is. And that's a very good thing for us because now we know how to start. So I won't get into a full proof of this, but the idea is that if f prime x is x minus c to the k minus 1 times q of x, you can essentially integrate on both sides and get f of x plus c on one side where c is some constant right is equal this is the fundamental theorem of calculus by the way so differentiate implies by ftc the left hand side is just f of x plus c and the right hand side is in fact a multiple of x minus c to the k because you can there's a lot of things you can do uh the easiest of which is just to make a substitution set x minus c to some u so now you're integrating u to the k minus 1 times q of u plus c du. But the point is this is a polynomial of in u of degree at least k minus 1, right? And when you integrate a polynomial of degree at least k minus 1, you get something that's of degree at least k. And so this is u to the k times something. And so it's divisible by x minus. But that was a proof. So that hopefully is convincing. Right, so now we have a criteria. If we want fx to leave a constant remainder when divided by x minus c to the k for any constant c, we just need to make sure that f prime x is divisible by x minus c to the k minus 1. So it's an if and only if condition. Great. But if you go back to the problem, we see that px needs to be needs to leave a remainder of 1 when x when divided by x to the 100, so it leaves a constant remainder. And similarly for x minus 2 to the cube. So what we want is, we want p prime x to be divisible by x to the 99 and x minus 2 square. Right? Since this is, since we want p to p, to, p of x to leave a, remain, a constant remainder when divided by x to the 100 and x minus 2 cube. So we just reduce the powers and this is the condition we want. But because x to the 99 and x minus 2 square are co-prime polynomials, we see this pretty easily, right? Since, we, since x to the 99 is just when we write it as a product of linear polynomials, it's just x 99 times and this is just x minus 2. Right? So they don't share any linear polynomial factors. And even you could, if you want, you could run a Euclidean algorithm and so on. But it's pretty visible that these two are co-prime. So this just means that p prime x is divisible, is a multiple of the, the LCM, which is this x to the 99 times x minus 2 squared. Okay, great. So we get that p prime x is equal to uh, some constant. We, we only need a constant and we'll see why. Times x to the 99 minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. We could take a to be a polynomial instead of cons of a constant, but for our pur purposes, this will be enough. Now, if you integrate on both sides, we get that uh, 
P of X is equal to A times X to the 101 by 101 minus 4 times X to the 100 by 100 plus 4 times sorry this is 102 by 102 this is 101 by 101 plus 4x to the 100 by 100 plus a constant right when you integrate indefinitely you have a constant remaining so this is the form that px can take great now we have two free parameters right we can set a and b to be anything we want so we can set them appropriately so that px leaves the constant remainders that we want so we want px to leave a remainder of 1 when we divide by x to the 100 which means when I plug in x is equal to 0 which is the unique 0 of x to the 100 I want the remainder to be 1 so this is just the remainder theorem right the remainder theorem says theorem says that the remainder when gx is divided by Well, linear polynomials, but even powers of linear polynomials will behave the same way. The remainder is just g of a. So we plug in x is equal to 0 here, and we just want it to be 1. So we want p of 0 to be 1, and similarly we want p of 2 to be 2. Right, because we want it to leave a remainder of 2 when divided by x minus 2 cube. So when we plug in x is equal to 2, we want what's remaining to be 2. This is what we want. We want p of 0 to be 1 and then we want p of 2 to be 2. And we, so we plug in p of 0, all of these become 0. And so this big term becomes 0. So p of 0 is equal to b, which we want to be 1. Hence b is equal to 1. That was easy. Similarly, p of 2 is equal to 2 implies a times this whole constant 2 to the 1 over 2 by 1 over 2 minus 4 times 2 to the 101 by 101 plus 4 times 2 to the 100 by 100 plus 1 is equal to 2 hence hence a is equal to 1 by this whole thing and there's no point in writing it again so that that's it if we set a and b to be these constants and we plug them in here, the resulting polynomial p of x will do the job we wanted it to do. Now for the little comment that I wanted to make. Clearly this looks like a Chinese remainder theorem setup. How do we relate this? So this setup, right? We, this is the Chinese remainder theorem setup. How do we relate this to the Chinese remainder theorem for numbers, right? Generally, if you want to solve x congruent to r mod a and x congruent to s mod b, where a and b are co-prime, right? That's usually the kind of setup for CRT. What you can do is use you the Euclidean algorithm. To find the Bezu coefficient. What does that mean? You can use the Euclidean algorithm to find uh, x0 and y0 in integers such that ax0 plus by0 is equal to 1, which is the GCD, the GCD of NV. Right? This is what Bezu's theorem says. Bezu's theorem says that. Uh, in general, if you have any two integers a and b, you can find x0 and y0 such that ax0 plus b y0 is equal to the GCD. In our case, that's 1. One can run the Euclidean algorithm backwards, and this is something you can maybe look up online afterwards. You can run the Euclidean algorithm backwards to find these x0 and y0. But, and, since, and the moment you have this, if you have this equation, if I look at it modulo a, it says that b y naught is congruent to 1 mod a and a x naught is congruent to 1 mod b. So if I just multiply, look at this. If I just multiply r on both sides here and s on both sides here, 
This would imply that RBY0 plus SAX0 satisfies this exact set of equations and this x. You can do the exact same thing for polynomials, right? Because polynomials have a Euclidean algorithm, you can run it backwards. So for us, we could run the Euclidean algorithm backwards to find polynomials P1x and P2x such that P1x times x to the 100 plus P2x times x minus 2 cube is equal to the GCD, which is 1. And now we can multiply appropriately to get the remainders we want. That's it. And so there is this, and so polynomials and numbers behave surprisingly similarly in terms of their algebra. Uh, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you learned that CRT and in general the kind of number theory that we expect from natural numbers moves a little bit into polynomials as well. And I hope you had fun seeing that. Thank you very much.